Okay, today we're going to look at the EOQ production model. The EOQ production differs because inst uh, delivery is not instantaneous. Uh, it happens over time and some of the inventory is consumed during the production process, or yeah, production process, which means our production run, which our Q run, is not equal to our max inventory level, Q max. This is depicted by this diagram here. If we were going to put all the inventory into production, we'd have Q run here. But what actually happens is some of the inventory is used up while we're manufacturing it. Um, so the maximum we'll ever have in inventory is Q max. The, our pesky accountants always want to find out what is our average inventory level so we can value it. And we're also going to introduce the reorder point. Um, our D here is the slope of the line, which represents our daily demand. And <clears throat> the slope of this line here is the daily production minus the daily demand. That's the theory behind it. Let's go have some fun. Okay, from the problem that was given, we're going to look at our company, Brown Sugar Inc. And they're making a product we'll call Wild Horses Multigrain Flour. Uh, from the write-up, we know our annual demand is 5,000 pounds or 5,000 one-pound bags of wild horses, multi-green flour, and that's annual, meaning yearly. Um, the per unit setup cost, or every time we go to uh, produce a batch of wild horses, will cost us $50 to set up. If we decide to hold a bag, a one-pound bag in inventory, it's going to cost us two dollars per unit. Um, our production, our daily production quantity, we can produce up to 50 bags a day. Our lead time for a read order point is five days. First thing we have to do is figure out what is our daily demand. Um, the da daily demand is pretty easy to figure out. We just take our annual demand and divide it by how many days we're working, work days. In this example, we're going to use 365, but as you'll see in class, we can use other days. So this is simply 5,000 divided by 365, which is 13.7. So now we have all the basic information we need to solve this problem. Uh, the problem asks for what are the total costs and what is the reorder point. Of course, figuring out total cost is a loaded question, so we'll go through that next. All right, you remember our model for our total cost. Our total cost, and this is an annual total cost, is our total of ordering costs, or total setup costs, plus our total um, holding cost, or how much it takes us to hold an inventory. If we break the formula down, we know that ordering cost is the number of orders, um, I mean the number of setups times the per unit charge for setups. Um, our holding cost is our average inventory level times how much it costs to keep us each one in inventory. So looking at ordering costs first, n is the number of setups which is the same, you remember that it's uh, our D over our Q. Just to be specific, we're going to be using Q run here, so, um, which is the total amount produced. So Q run is the total amount, so the total run quantity, because that's kind of slang used in this environment. We call a production run just a run. So D divided by Q run. Um, <clears throat> All right, we also need to figure out what Q run is to get started here. So uh, very simply, we just plug it back into the formula. You notice this differs from the EOQ formula because we have to add a fraction in here that compensates for how much inventory is used up or our demand that is satisfied while we're producing. Um, in this case, we use 1 times uh, D divided by P. I'm not going to go through the proof for you, but believe me, that's it. Um, you notice 
that this will always be less than zero. So this will come out to um, a smaller quantity than we would have if we took the full amount. All right, so we just plug the numbers in. Two, we have five, our annual demand is 5,000. Our setup charge is $50 per unit. Um, our holding cost is two, or D, we just calculated a 13.7, and our production rate is 50 given. Uh, we solved for that, it's 586. One convention we will be using in this class is we're going to round off to two decimal places, so I just pointed a 0 0.80. In real life, you would have some type of convention with your company because it doesn't make sense making 0.8 of a unit. You'd probably round up to 587 units. All right, let's go on. Okay, so <clears throat> we're looking at ordering costs here. We just determined that our N is D divided by Q run. Our D is, which was given, is 5,000 units annually. We just calculated Q run, which is 586.8. We multiply that by our per, uh, per unit setup charge, which is 50. Um, so we multiply that all out, and our annual ordering costs are $426. Another question that typically comes up is, how long will each production run last? It's also called cycle time, so T cycle right here. is just simply the number of work days divided by our N, which is the number of orders. Um, in this example, we're using a year. We're making believe we're working, you know, 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, so 365 divided by our N is 42.8 days. I could ask the same, or someone could ask the same question of, well, how many weeks will it run? Of course, we know there's 52 weeks in a year. We divide that by N, so this would be 6.1 weeks versus days. So when you, people ask you about cycle time, one trick question is always to go back between days and weeks. Okay, next we're going to take a look at our holding costs. We just uh, computed our ordering or setup costs. Now we need to figure out this part of the equation, which is our holding costs. Um, you see it's average inventory times the amount of uh, the per unit charge for holding that inventory or keeping it in inventory. So before we can find the average, we have to find Q max. Um, this is the maximum inventory level. Remember that in a production problem or production model, Q max does not equal Q run. So this is the formula we use. We have our Q run. We multiply it by our fraction of how much is, basically how much is used up during the production run and we'll never see the inventory shelves. So simply plugging the numbers in, we've already calculated Q run at 586. We know our daily demand is 13.7, our production rate is 50 units. So that gives us an answer of 426.04 units. All right. Once we have, we know our maximum amount in uh, inventory, our pesky accountants always want to know our average inventory amount so they can calculate all the costs we need for a balance sheet there. So Q average is simply our max divided by two, simple average. A lot of times, including our book, you'll see it written this way, with taking the uh, the Q run, I mean the Q max formula, and actually putting it in the equation. You can do either way, they're equivalent. I find I like doing this because you need to find the max inventory anyway for most problems, so it's easier doing it in two steps. So our Q uh, average is simply our 426 divided by 2, which is 213. All right, once we have that information, we can calculate our holding costs. We just take the 213. We were given the per unit inventory holding charge of $2. So 213 times 2 is $426.04. And 
And now we pull it and pile it back into our total cost. We see our annual ordering cost, our annual holding cost. They're both 420, uh, 426.04, uh, giving us 852. Same as the straight EOQ model. We know that uh, uh, by definition that you know our lowest cost happens at the intersection where our ordering cost equals our holding cost. So you notice this is a quick little check to make sure you did it right. These two costs are even. Since we're rounding off to two decimal places, we'll just call it close enough. Sometimes it won't be exact. The last question I wanted to address is, when should brown sugar reorder? Um, so we have to calculate the reorder point which is simply our uh, daily demand times the lead time, how long it takes us for our suppliers to send us our supplies. So we've already calculated our daily demand, which is 13.7. We were given the lead time of five days, so it comes out to 68.49. Typically, again, you'd round it up to 69 in industry. What is the unit of measure here? It's demand times lead time, so units times days. So this would be in, in units or you know, enough to make one pound bags of um, wild horses oats. All right, this is just a really quick visual on what we did in solving the EOQ model. Remember, inventory deliveries over time. It's not instantaneous like we did in the straight EOQ. Um, some inventory is consumed during production, so that's what this is showing. If it wasn't consumed, we'd have Q run. So the difference between Q max and Q run is how much was used up in the uh, during the production process. We've calculated Q run 586. We've calculated Q max 426. We took the average and we got Q average, which is our 213 units. We also calculated the reorder point, which is 68.49 units. The time part of the graph here right, uh, represents our, our T cycle, which we calculated at uh, 42.84 days.